Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly for Beeducation.com. And I'm Mel McKay with Beeducation.com. We just shot this great class over on Facebook Live, our Beeducation Live show, but we've edited it and archived it here for you to watch. If you hear us answering customer questions or talking to, quest talking to customers, you can just ignore that. That was just stuff that was in the moment when we shot the class, but there's still so much great content here. Yeah, but if you have questions while you're watching this archive, Go ahead and leave a comment below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching through our site, just toss us an email at classes at beachcation.com. And we'll get back to you with an answer. Yeah, let's get into the video. Wait, 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 there. Welcome to Beachcation Live, Facebook Live with Lisa Kelly, our CEO, and me, Mel McCabe, our product manager. And I wanted to do a shout out to our live studio audience. Can we hear them? Woo! I was thinking if you guys want to uh, be part of our live studio audience, you could always write in to Mel McCabe. Uh, our address is on the site, 365 Convention Way, and you just send either a bottle of wine or some donuts for you and your handsome single brother. Right? You're like... <laughs> It's as hard to get tickets to this as it is to the Ellen show. And we're way more interested. <laughs> send cash, send donuts. So today, you guys, we're going to go over wire wrap loops. And Mel's going to show us the way that she does it. And we have a bunch of different classes on the site that we're going to go over that go into depth. They're, most of them are with me. And they're long. I mean, long, not boring. Long, very interesting. Yes, so we go more into tools and wire and all that. But Mel wanted to do this live. Tell them specifically what you use it for. Because customer service gets the questions all the time. Where we have some chains, we have chains, and you have chains, and with that rectangle necklace that you thought, okay, as soon as the Kardashians, you know, aren't as popular, won't be popular anymore. It's going to be popular, I think, for the next ten years because it's, it's just sticking around. It's so darn cute. Yeah, and. All of these like dainty chains, because you want it to almost look like your rectangle necklace is kind of floating, you're, we get the questions of, my jump ring won't fit in, or what kind of, what gauge jump ring should I be putting in there? And, and you, some people are trying 20 gauge and it's just not strong enough. It's or a little thin chain. With, yeah, with a thin chain. Or you worry like a tug, uh, is, it, is the jump ring going to come out? And how can I solder it in there? So we want to show you guys two tricks that we have. One where you can use a 24 gauge head pin and one where you can just use 24 gauge wire and you don't have to worry if you, you can just cut your chain right in the center and then wrap it in or use just chain by the inch. Yeah. So we're going to show you that. Exactly. We're excited. Exactly, exactly. It's back in here. Um, before we get into that, we were just talking about the tip of the week, and Mel has a brilliant one, so give it to him. I was thinking, as it's summertime and you're putting applying all of that sunblock, make sure that at the end of the day, you take your necklace off and just wash it. Wipe off the gunk from the sunblock and wash it with soap and water, and then just wipe, wipe your necklace off, and that way... You're not going to have that gunk build up that then ends up tarnishing and yeah. turning green. I never and... think to do that. That's a really well. I never take my jewelry off, so it just gets washed oh, in the shower. I do it a lot. I wear so much sunblock because and the sun is so dangerous now. All the time. I do. Yeah. Yes. So that's the tip of the week. I love it. Wipe it and wash it. This right here. This is this is the example here. Like here's a Rolo chain, and I just did, and I'll show you guys how I did this. It's kind of like a figure eight wire wrap with no bead. Right here, see? Where I made the loop a little larger where the rectangle is, and I made it a little smaller into the chain. So here's that guy. It just, I mean, it looks, you wouldn't know that wasn't a jump ring, but there's no chance of that rectangle going anywhere. Totally wired shut. Completely. And here I actually use where you could use a silver bead, a gold bead, you know, something that you wouldn't see it. Here I used a little tiny two millimeter Swarovski. I think let's, it's see can, let's see if we can get like a super close up. Hold it there and I'll zoom in. Okay. I'm not sure how this camera is going to love it, but let's try for the folks at home. For you folks at home, that's good. Oh, that's a good close up. Yeah, yeah I hope that works. And then actually keep that close up. Let me see if I can bring this in here. Here I want to show you the two different ones that I'm going to show you guys today, which is one with a head pin. Give it a sec to focus. It's thinking about it. It's like, oh, that hurts. I need glasses. And one where I've wire wrapped. There we go. So here you just use a head pin. And with a head pin, the way the weight is, the bead on the head pin, here I just use a little tiny seed bead, just rests up top there, like a little fringe. And here uh -oh. I did the seed bead in between. Like as the part little, of the wrap loop. As part of the wrap. So this ends up being like a dangle, and this is like 
incorporated into that strength there. Well, and I think people, like, if you, because I feel like one thing, when you're wire wrapping, you kind of learn to do a head pin maybe first because you've got a yeah. pair of earrings once you got the wire wrapped down. And I'll show you on an already finished necklace here, you guys. That head pin is so great because it can... Um, you can wire wrap into, here's just an actual pendant, you can wire wrap right into the chain, and it just, it rests up there like part of the design, but you can, it's like creating your own jump ring, but it's fully closed, and you didn't have to solder it. And it's got a little splash of color on it if you want it. Yeah, I do love that. Yeah, I love how you guys do that. I never did this before you showed me how you and Taryn do this a lot. I think it's really smart. Yeah, my sister made this one. I love this. And then she, then she does a similar thing, too, where she either does a just part of the wire wrap on the bo on the back for your clasp. Well, or that's, that's the key, too. Like, this is great that you're putting on the clasp without the jump ring, but also you were going to talk about, oh, you have the chain extender there, too, right? The ch exactly, where if you already have your, you might be buying your ready-made chain, it's still nice that you can wire wrap on a little extra larger chain, whether it's an inch or two, so that your customer or your family member, whoever you're making this for, if they want to, with a different mm -hmm. neckline, they can put it in here and put mm -hmm. it in here. And all of that is just because you either used a head pin or a wire wrap to yeah. just add that little thicker chain. Yeah. Here, and I'll show this, the last one I'll show you before I dive right in, is I did it here with the head pin. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, look at that. You just, I just did a head pin where I did the head pin into the clasp. Mm-hmm. And then here I did the head pin into the longer chain extender. Yeah, and hold it there for a second. So for you guys that do a lot of stamping, where some of these are great because you're bringing beadwork in so you can match some color up in here. If you're just doing silver, mm -hmm. um, then you can put a silver bead there. If you don't want a splash of color, I use like those tiny little silver round beads. Two or three millimeter, yes. Yeah, or I love the Bali silver beads. We have packs of Bali silver mixes on the site. So it just adds, it keeps with the tone of the color, but just adds a little something, something. And it kind of makes it look a little more expensive, I think. Yeah. Which is kind of nice. Or with the, did you show without the bead yet? I don't remember. Did I miss that? Um, that one, yes. This one was the first one I opened up Perfect. with because I do, I do assume, you guys, that maybe some people would want, mm -hmm. if you want to just keep it totally neutral but very clean and, yeah. and completely secure, there it is without the bead. Yeah, so in this case, just to make sure when you do the wraps, they come together, mm -hmm. right? And I try to keep the wrap tails on the back because they do show, but you want them to come together so you don't have a gap, but try to keep the tails on the back so it looks really clean, yeah? Absolutely, and you can always use your chain nose plier. I, that's the one reason I do like the Tron X or Lindstrom to be able to just really get in there and, and do like a little pinch. So if it ends up in the front, yeah, it's not gonna down. snag whatsoever. Okay, yeah, yeah. I want to show you guys now. What you're gonna need is your chain nose your round nose, and your cutter. Oop, and I need some of that stuff over there. Oop, sorry. That's okay, you were just trying to be helpful. I'm fast. She is very fast. Okay, right now I have my little rectangle blank here. Do you want me to pull this forward a little? Yeah, it might be kind of easy, that's okay. Yeah. I'm gonna show you guys first how I do it with the um, piece of wire. So you guys, 24 gauge wire I think works the best. Here I've just cut, I actually just had a little spool here of craft wire, just because I feel like you can practice a lot with this to, before yeah, you yeah. actually dive in with your sterling or gold fill and just see how comfortable you are. And I go ahead and I take my round nose pliers, leaving myself about maybe half an inch here. You can leave a little longer if you're still new to it too and you just want, I mean with craft wire, it doesn't matter if you use a little more. I go ahead and push this. So I'm creating a 90 degree angle. So you're pushing the tail. Pushing the tail. Uh -huh. Then I turn my round nose plier. Now this is the part that's gonna go in the chain. So only give yourself maybe about a millimeter and a half here um, on your round nose. Okay, so just to back up real quick. So yeah. you're talking about the exact spot on your round nose that right. you're holding the wire. Cause that's gonna determine the size of your loop. That's absolutely right. So I'm just gonna do a pretty small loop into the chain because you don't really wanna see much of the loop, yeah, right? Yeah, I agree, good one. And then I go ahead and push it over the tool. All this is, is gone over also in the wire wrapping find a fundamentals class. Yeah, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I created here a little elephant trunk. Can you hold that still? I'll try to zoom in on it. Yeah. So they can see. Cool. And then I'll go ahead and put the plier, the bottom part of the plier, right into the little elephant face. Mm -hmm. And I wire wrap it around the bottom of the plier, just like this. Okay, so, so I've created a little loop. Yeah, so with that, what I refer to that in the class is a P, but now 
the P ends up being centered. So it ends up looking like a P when I do it, mm -hmm. but then you kink it over. So you kinked it first to center it. I do I it did. afterwards. Oh. But it's fine. Whichever way works for you. Either way works. We're not like, you gotta do it our way. Mm -hmm. But what you want to make sure now is that that loop is totally centered on the length of this wire. If it's like cockeyed and over on the side, it's, it's going to end up that way, right? That's a good point. And after you wire wrap it, it's hard to adjust it. That is true. Because you've already got something in there. So That's right. So make sure everything is centered at this point. Yes. Then you're going to go ahead and take your chain nose pliers and you're going to open this up from the side. And I've seen so many students just kind of open it this way and then you end up um, kind of warping the size of the perfect circle that you did. Yeah, so open it just like you would a jump ring. Exactly. So just go ahead and open that up just like you would a jump ring. Exactly. And I'm only gonna... enough space to scoot something in there, huh? You yes. have to get crazy, not huge. Here I'm going to put it right into my chain. We're going to pretend that this is a, a chain. You can either, like this is just chain by the inch. You can do that or you could go ahead and cut in the center your already made, your, your completed chain that's with a good. clasp. Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Here is the chain nose pliers that I'm going to hold on to the loop right here. No, is that Rolo chain and is it sterling? This is sterling Rolo chain. Yes. And we're just using brass so you can see a little bit of contrast. Yes. I wanted you guys to be able to see the difference. Can here? I jump in real quick yeah. here, Mel? So this is really important that I see students run into as well. You don't want to hold this loop still with your round nose because the dynamics of how round nose work, it will mar your wire. You want to hold it with something flat. So that's why she's grabbed that loop flat within the jaws of her chain nose plier. And we go, in, we go into depth and on what that looks like if you do it wrong in the class. But that's a really important key there. Because if she had grabbed that with these, she'd end up with two lines on her pretty loop. Mm -hmm. So you have to hold it pretty sturdy, right? Absolutely. And not, you're, you're going to get used to it as you don't want it too tight so you're really smashing. Just sure. You'll find that kind of comfort spot where it's like tight but yeah, not super tight. Yeah, just enough so it doesn't move, but don't give it the death grip. Exactly. exactly. It'll be look a little hammered. Here I'm going to use my round nose. If you have another chain nose, you can use your chain nose. If you've created a long enough, uh, you can, a long enough little wire here, you can use your fingers. I'm going to just take my round nose right here, and I'm just going to wrap once. Because I don't want too many, you, you can wrap more if you want, but I don't want it to be too long. So I'm, I'm just going to do. I'm a two wrapper. You're a two wrapper. Here, I kind of did like maybe one, one and a half. Yeah, and I keep, you want to keep an eye on what's the front and the back. Because if you're about to trim that, you don't want the Good point. tail to sit on the front. But that, that's Good awesome. Point. And your whole, I noticed there you held this part of the wire with your round nose because that doesn't matter. You just need a handle. Yes, because that's going to be cut off anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you get in here with the tip of your cutters. Here I use the Tronics, I like them. Lindstrom are also great. And I just cut right there. If you have a little bit left over, you can smash then if you want with your chain nose. This actually there aren't any, there's nothing left over when I use these Tronics, so I like them a lot. <laughs> That's good. And then here I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little seed bead. Oh, it's a crystal. I couldn't tell with my glasses. But it's a two millimeter crystal. You could use a seed bead, you could use gold bead, you could use nothing too. And then I'm gonna grab my round nose. And this is, I'm going to hold it at pretty much the same spot I, I held it for when I was making the first loop. It's about two millimeters in because you want to have enough room to make either one loop or two loops. If you wanted to do like Lisa did a couple loops, you'd just choke up a little bit more on your. that's determining like the neck where the wraps are going to lay. Right. How much room that you're mm -hmm. going to have. Yeah. Now, here's the important part for when you are, because you're going to put this into this rectangle. You want to have enough room in your loop right here that there's going to be movement and it's not going to get stuck and then be rubbing against this tip because then That's you end a up really good point. I never think of that. You end up then, um, it wears against the wire and the wire could open up. So watch this. I'm going to push it over again and here I'm going to choke up quite high on my plier because I want to create a large, much larger loop here. At least I said, it's right. I, I kind of turn it a little bit wrap it around the bottom and I have a much larger loop here than I do on this side because this side I kind of want to look like part of the chain here I want to have enough room like I said so it actually is like pretending to be a jump ring yeah that's good open this guy up I love that tip. and then you're just going to go ahead and put it right into your rectangle or clasp depending what you're whatever you want to do or side. any pendant I'm showing the rectangle because I'm telling you guys this is our most asked question with these rectangles that's a good point here you can see it's uh, it's fluid it moves it doesn't touch the corner which is my favorite part and then your grab. smart little cookie Mel McCabe oh well, thank you I'll t I've made enough of these necklaces too I mean everybody wants one right every every family member wants one here I'm just going to show you how you use my finger because I had enough oh you know what else this would be a great place to incorporate a birthstone. 
That is a great idea. I love that idea. Yes. Or if you know someone has a favorite color, you know, yeah. like they wear, they always wear olive green or whatever. Here, I'm going to take my little cutters olive again. Olive green. <laughs> That's so random. Well, I think I picked it because you're kind of wearing olive green. Oh. Yes. You're going to be Always thinking green. of you, Lisa. Love it. Love it. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, let's hold it down so we can get some zoom action Here on Here you can see I did, like I said, it's brass and a brass rectangle with the sterling wire, but I think that allows you to kind of see everything a little bit more. Actually, with this camera shot, you can't really even tell that it's brass wire, huh? You can see your fingerprints. You can! That's really pretty. Next one, I'm going to show a head pin. Okay. On the next side. Let's do it. So I don't think you do one side that one side with your little figure eight and one side with a head pin, but I want you guys to be able to see both ways of doing it. Here I take my head pin, I pop on my little two millimeter crystal or seed bead or whatever you'd like. And I go ahead and I choke up on the round nose about two millimeters, mm -hmm. pushing it over again, away from me. Then, right at this point, I choke up on the plier because this is initially where you're making your jump ring or your, your large enough loop to be able to accommodate where you punched your hole, which actually, you guys, i got to tell you something. That's the, see, I almost grabbed it just like Lisa told me not to. Here, you're going to go ahead with your chain nose and open it up. Just so you guys know, as you are punching your hole, if you don't already get the pre-punched ones, which, by the way, we got the pre-punched ones, um, make sure you do it close to the edge. I mean, not so close that it's going to be too thin, yeah. but you don't want to go too far in um, to your blank because then any jump ring or wire is going to be really tough to yeah. to get and the in bigger, there. Just a reminder: the bigger the jump ring, the weaker it is. Um, let's say you had a very small 20 gauge one or a six millimeter 20 gauge one. That six millimeter 20 gauge jump ring is going to be a lot weaker. So you want to be able to work small without having to like shove a big 14 gauge one in there yes. to be big enough. Yes. Well, and this is one of the reasons I like that you can still go with something delicate. Like 24 gauge is not too thick, mm -hmm. but because it is wire wrapped, it's secure. And there it is with... Turn it to the side a little bit so we can see what it looks like. On oh, the yeah, side. from the side here. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that well there, but... That's pretty. So that's just a little... Um... I love this, too, because I feel like if you don't have the correct wire... I don't know about you guys, but I'll feel like I'm working with Sterling. I go to my cabinet. I've got gold filled and brass and copper. But she, I always have a head pin in the right metal. Like, I always have yeah, a couple yeah. of head pins. So that's yeah. nice to be able to use that. Or even if it head pin's long enough and that's all you have, cut the pin off if you want to... That's do true, too. Or the head. Yeah. But I do think this looks nice and finished. It looks great. So one thing I just want to talk about um, or bring up, if you don't mind, Mel, is with the wire that you choose, Mm -hmm. I generally, like Mel, use 24 gauge, but if you have really fine gemstones that don't fit on 24 yes. gauge, you can bump down to 26. to 26 or even 28, but if you're going that small, your loops need to be tiny. Absolutely. Because again, if this loop right here was made out of 28 gauge, one little poop, and it would smash it because it's just too, too thin. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing the links like to add on a clasp or something, try to do it really, really small, but that's why you want to try to get... Be, you have to choose your wire mm -hmm. to accommodate, or choose the bead to accommodate the wire that you're working on. It's yes. pretty important. Um, yes. And that sometimes that's why I actually do like the crystal, because you know it's, with most of the crystals, oh, the, the holes are great. Yeah, the Swarovski is going to be, exactly, it's nice. always going to be, it's always going to fit a 24, even 22 gauge. Yeah, if you want and if to. you wanted to bump it up to 22, you, you could, could do that. Tw you can even bump it up to whatever. It's just the bigger it gets, the bulkier it gets. So right. the whole goal here is to keep it a little bit dainty while being strong at the same time. Right, to keep the look of the, of the delicate rectangle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So pretty. And like I said, if you want to do it without the a bead, you just would just wrap, wrap twice, or I wrapped one and a half, and then I wrapped one and a half on the other, it met, and I had three loops, and four loops looks great, too. Yeah, I don't think I would, you can even see them. If you guys are new to this, practice this, because you want to make sure you get your, um, like I said, the tails on the back. Yeah. So just get a bunch of copper wire, do it, wrap it on, on your sterling, whatever, because you're just going to cut it off and do it again. Yeah. So do it over and over again until you get it right. I also wanted to point out, you guys, this technique is great when you may get your chain and maybe you're not even doing a rectangle you're actually just putting a pendant on there but i love then going ahead and doing a head pin with an inch or two of chain so that you have a chain extender mm -hmm. so that's really nice and when you do let's say you got an 18 gauge chain and you're going to cut right in the middle here to go ahead and put your rectangle in 
make sure that you check that chain. And I'll show you in a minute when we do the front shot on your neck to see because that, that rectangle is going to add another inch to your necklace. Yeah. So you don't want it to end up too long. Better to put a chain extender in the back and yeah, have it Yeah, let's go around and right. you can kind of give my, a visual on that. Okay. So with this, this guy I actually didn't cut any off. So you can see here, this is a little long. But, and you might want it to be about this long. And I actually like the option of being able to have it, let's say, this short, and then maybe put a chain extender in the back. Mm -hmm. um, so what you would do is, when you'd cut, cut in the middle, and then I would cut maybe about half an inch here, half an inch here, so that your clasp and your, uh, where you're going into the clasp, jump ring here, or soldered ring, are even. Smart. Smart. So on the wire wrap, I want to go over the class because Mel does it a different way than I do, but it's the same steps, it's just in a different order. And if you've learned a third way and it works, then stick with it. Like when I teach class, I'm like, hey, if you, if you already do this wire wrap a certain way, if I want to check out my way to see if it's a little easier, maybe try it. And if you're like, ah, I hate it, stick with your way. As long as you're getting a nice, <laughs> a nice strong loop that's centered, it's not wonky, and you don't have tails sticking out, and you don't have marks in it. I mean, these tricks that we're showing you, maybe you can incorporate it into your way or whatever. Sure. But I'm just gonna share the screen with you. So this is, I'm sharing my screen with you. This is our homepage. If you click on Learn, and you go down to Free Online Classes, and click on Wirework, then there's all these classes for you. This is a full class right here on the wire wrapped head pin. So you can check that out if you want more details on what we went over today. I'm gonna to hit the back button. And right here is Wire Jewelry Fundamentals that I teach and it's an hour long and we go into depth, into tools and wire and technique and we can get really, really close up. So just a reminder, these classes are free. I mean, you just click and play and you can see all the different steps here that we broke it out for you and we're always here to answer questions. You're probably wondering about tools too, and again, in that class we go over like the difference in quality tools. So one thing I wanna say that I don't know if I go over it in the class is if you have your wire wraps perfect and you're like, I know my technique is right, but you're using cheap tools, it might be your tool. And I'm totally not saying that as a sales pitch, I promise, go buy your tools wherever you want. But often when I teach live classes, someone will be like, I'm doing everything right, and I look at a round nose and it's oval. I mean, if you bought, cheap tools, it might be getting in your way of perfecting that work. Right, and I do so, feel like the cutter also with this type of thing could be the biggest yeah. difference where you could be using that tip because your tip is so dull though, you are, you're having to kind of yeah. rock it back and forth with your fingers and then you have to smash it so much and that can be it as well. So like, yeah, and if you have cheap tools that are working great, then you stick with them. Stick with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah why not? Um, let's see, okay, we've got lots of comments, lots of people joining, thank you everybody. Um, just wanna give a shout out again to our closed Facebook group, which is just a group of Beeducation people over there, it's called Beeducation Community, I was Beeducation.com, Community, Metal Stamping and Beyond. If you haven't joined that group, go over there and join, because we are talking about a lot of really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sharing and a lot of really talented people in there, and you're welcome to join us. Bye guys. Yay.